Hi guys, Max here, and today we are going to learn how to make cinematic bars for your videos. And I will be using Premiere Pro and Photoshop CC 2015. So, let's get started. I am a film buff, and I like to follow guidelines set by the industry. And this can be correct. You can do it the right way with this, but it can be kind of tricky. But I like to put a little more effort into something that I can make one time and use it for every video and it's always correct, no matter what. So, and just to give a little background on cinematic bars, right now we're working with a video um, that is 1920 by 1080p and that resolution is also known as 16 by 9, a standard HD format. But if you look back in time, you know, when you grew up watching TV, you had resolutions that were a 4 by 3 um, aspect ratio also known as 1.33 by 1. Then, you know, you have your IMAX standard, which is 1.43 by 1, or my all-time favorite, which is 2.39 by 1, also commonly known as 2.4 by 1. So, how do we make resolution-correct bars that will always fit on our videos? Simple little trick. So now that we have Photoshop open, we want to make a document that is the exact size as our composition in Premiere. So, File New, 1920 by 1080, width 1920, height 1080. We'll call it um, Bars, just like our Premiere project. Click OK. New Document. So we're going to do a little math here. So we want to figure out what our resolution would be with these black bars right here. What size the black bars need to be to fit our video exactly to make it widescreen. Um, so bear with me. A little bit of math. So we know right now that our video is 1920 by 1080. And I can write with a mouse pretty well. And this is equal to our aspect ratio which is 16 by 9. 16 being the width, 9 being the height. But what does this actually equal? It is just division. So if we divide 1920 by 1080, we get 1.77777778, which is just rounded to 1.77 or 1.78. Now if we divide 16 divided by 9, also get the same thing, 1.78, 1.77. So 1.7 let's say 7. But um, our standard ratio that we found out online was 16 by 9 and or 1.77 to 1. What we're going to do is take this ratio to figure out what this should be for our black bars. So my all-time favorite widescreen ratio for cinema is 2.39 by 1. So 2 point three nine by one this being the width and this being the height now we know what our width is it is 1920 but what would our height be to make it look cinematic so we just do some simple math normally in a cross division you would 1920 times one divided by two three nine this could be a different number that's why I always multiply, but because it's because it's one, we can just divide. So 1920 divided by 2.39 equals 803.34728. And we're just going to call that 803. So erase this is equal to 803. Alright, now you can do this for anything. So if you're going to go with, you know, uh, some other anamorphic standard, um, like 2.35 by 1 or 1.85 by 1, which is, you know, 1.85 by 1 is a common U.S. widescreen cinema, is the common U.S. widescreen cinema standard. So just do a little math, figure it out. But what do you do with these numbers? Who knows? What I would do is this. So create a new layer and hide our background. Don't need it anymore. So we're going to create a new document based on our numbers we just just found out and it's going to be called file well, file new 
1920 by 803. And reverse, we'll call it reverse. You'll know why in a second. Looks widescreen already. Awesome. And we'll double click the background layer, double click it, pops up new layer, click OK, gets rid of this. We can change this color to, let's say, red just so it stands out. Reverse this, click Command, Delete, or something else on a PC. I can't remember what that button is right now, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. And what we want to do is pull this layer into this document. So drag this out, grab this layer, drag it into here, and we will center this onto the screen. So imagine this being what our video would be, or where our video would be held. So this is in the center, perfect. And these would be where our bars would be because we just created this uh, video resolution that we need. So what I would do is this. I would click this little thing right here and then highlight. This is your direct select tool. Is it called direct select? Or your magic wand tool, excuse me. And you click it, creates this box around here. You go to select inverse, which now it selects what it, we left off, which is the empty spots, create a new layer, change this back to black, flip it, so when you hit command delete it fills in these boxes. Now we can turn these layers off and we have our bars we just created that are the exact size we need to be 2.39 by 1 standard for video. Nice. So what we can do is select, deselect, file, save as We'll save it to our desktop right now, change it to a PNG, and we will call it two um, dash three nine by one underscore ten eighty p. I didn't put a dot in there because you can't put dot in your save files. At least I don't think so. So two by three nine or two point three nine by one. Um, 1080p black bars. PNG, click save. It's been saved to our desktop. Hide all this. We can new or excuse me, right click, import. Go to our desktop. Here's I two by three nine black bars. Import. Take this file and drag it on to our sequence, and they are perfect black bars. They're the exact size we will always need them to be. How cool is that? Sweet. Now there's another way to do this that is actually a little bit simpler and less cool, I think, because you're not actually making anything. It is a lot simpler, but this doesn't look as, it's not as easy on your eyes, I think, inside of Premiere. It's actually kind of nice to look at these black bars while you're working. So um, what we can do is just delete this layer and quickly we can go in here and go to sequence, sequence settings, and change your um, vertical to 803, which would be that resolution. Yeah, yes, change it, that's okay. And now it's been widescreened. And it's built into this. So we can move our footage around to fit perfectly. And what happens when you export this, so file, export, media. Go ahead and make this fit onto the screen real quick so we can see. Your format to QuickTime. My YouTube preset. YouTube at 1080p, so 1920 by 1080. I could export this directly to the desktop. Call it bars. Export. Shouldn't take but a couple of seconds. Make that 20 seconds. Now that that's exported, we can open it up. Because we set it to the final resolution, it automatically adds bars to it, which is fine. Personally, I like putting my own bars inside of Premiere because it just lets me see it, what the final will look like with bars. But it is just as easy to make it like this inside of Premiere initially and let the 
um, ex export add the bars later but yeah I think this is a one of the better ways of making um, your little PNG that you can use for every single video you ever make and you never have to recrop things and do something and you can get the correct resolutions for the bars to make it a standard now you can you know do the same thing for a you know you can do the same thing for a you know a 4k document so like file new 3840 by 2160 which would be a you know 16 by 9 4k resolution click OK do the math for your 4k resolution so 3840 um, divided by 2.39 is 1606.7 or we can do 1607 round it up file new 3840 by 1607 change this to red do that pull it out Drag it in, center it. Come on, in the center. Got that, and there it is. So select this, select inverse, new layer, make it black. Turn these off, save this. Now you have a 4K PNG that you can save. Very, very simple. Works for most things. So, that's what I like to do. But yeah, um, I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'm Max with Cool Happens. And uh, please like and subscribe um, if you enjoyed this and it was helpful. Um, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll answer any questions you have. And just thanks. Thanks for joining me and uh, being here. So... Take it easy, guys, and uh, look out for more. There should be a lot more coming soon. Peace.